everyone. Um, welcome to the general scope of support for all Pivotal products. So in this short video, the aim is to discuss in detail the knowledge article that helps Pivotal support customer engineers um, make them aware of what is and what is not in the scope of support uh, for across all Pivotal products. So um, you can find the article in Salesforce if you just go to knowledge articles and look for general scope of support. And also this is available to any customer that can access the community um, link. Once they, once they log in, they can access the article. Um, so let's get started. So in scope, so it's the normal install config upgrade. So installation is supported. Now there is a note with installation and let's review the note. So Pivotal support will generally assist with installation issues. However, um, some Pivotal products requ require installation to be performed by an authorized provider. Okay. So I guess <clears throat> if, if you need to use other infrastructure or storage or a cloud provider, uh, you, you may need, the customer may need their authorization to do so. Um, but if you have any question about an installation that you're unsure about um, regarding a customer, you could also reach out to the, the PA or the local account team to just get a bit more information about it um, before providing feedback to the customer on whether you can help or not. So the second thing in scope is general usage. <clears throat> So obviously we support them when they're trying to use the product. The third one is supported product configuration as documented by Pivotal, this is very important. So if the customer is trying to make uh, configuration changes that are not within the scope of our Pivotal documentation, then um, it's outside the scope of support. Now again, discretion should be used. Um, if it's a, a snowflake, scenario that I'm trying to perform, you have to explain to them that probably the next time they do apply changes, the next time they do an install or upgrade, it will affect the product. So it's, our advice is not to do so. Um, if they want um, a configuration option opened up, going forward, it's probably best to follow the feature request route um, by the, the local team. The next one is Pivotal product features. So as features are provided per the product, per the documentation, we support those. Uh, diagnosis of support the product pivotal products so we will help troubleshoot any issues relating to any pivotal products and then next one is uh, production pivotal product performance troubleshooting okay it's always kind of a gray area for me performance troubleshooting because it's not, it's it's not as simple um, as yes or no so there's a note with this. So let's go, go to the note. The note says, uh, we will generally assist with performance issues found in Pivotal products. However, um, see the product specific guide for more details. So it's still a bit vague. Um, I would say that performance troubleshooting is based on everyday activities. So if the, if the product is working at a certain rate or a certain performance level, um, and then all of a sudden the performance is degraded over a certain period of time, then we would investigate that because a product that was installed and sold to meet a certain needs is now degraded in some way. So we need to investigate, we need to help the customer for all those uh, types of issues. Now, if the customer is literally um, putting a massive workload on the product to, to push it until it breaks and then they're asking you to investigate why it bro broke and um, that's not something that we we would support on the pivotal side because that's a different level of performance uh, troubleshooting it's just performance test related troubleshooting um, so I just want to clarify that point there um, next one is bug reporting obviously um, and bug fix so with bug fix, bug fixes are prioritized by Pivotal Engineering We with input from Pivotal support. There is no guarantee of an immediate fix. So that's very important. We will provide the bug information, but we can never guarantee a fix. Um, 
like sometimes we might describe a certain issue or this certain use case or scenario the customer is in, whereas the engineering team might then decide to take a different route to fix the issue in a different way than the customer is expecting. Okay. Um, also, if you have an issue that only affects one customer and not a new, you have an install base at 10,000, it doesn't make sense to put all the effort into a fix for one particular corner case scenario. So just, just beware, never guarantee a fix. Just, just always say we'll update engineering and we'll, pro we'll provide feedback from the engin engineering team. Um, let's move on to outer scope. So the following items are examples of tasks which are not covered by Pivotal support. So debugging custom code and applications, no. Um, so we don't support that. Second thing is load performance, stress testing of Pivotal products. Again, this is kind of performance troubleshooting. We don't, we don't troubleshoot issues where a customer is stress testing the product because the idea of a stress test is you will test it until it breaks. <clears throat> and there's an, a note with this one, which probably gives a bit more detail. Um, Pivotal support cannot help with any direct performance testing of Pivotal products, but the sole goal is to stress test. Uh, where the sole goal is to stress test. Pivotal support can and will help with performance issues encountered through normal and everyday usage of its products. So that reemphasizes what I said earlier. Um, the next one is third party products and add-ons. No, we do not support any third party products and add-ons. If the customer is um, has a plugin, third party plugin or add-on and there's issues with it, we would look at it and make sure that our product is healthy and performing as expected. And if we find the issues in the third party product, that's it, we ask the customer to go to the community, go to the third party product support to seek assistance. But we would do initial triage to make sure that it's not a, a, a pivotal product related issue. And the next one is modified customized systems, pivotal product packages and core forks. So yeah, if the, if the customer is modifying or customizing anything like a snowflake um, and they're forking GitHub um, repos and building their own products, then obviously we, we don't support any of that. That's quite clear. Um, the next one is Pivotal product preview features releases. So alpha, beta, RC, CA, your end of general, general support. We don't support in Pivotal support contract, we don't support any of those um, release candidates or uh, alpha beta or, or any of those. Okay, that's that's clear. So if if the customer releases a beta or alpha, there will be a documentation associated, and that documentation should probably will have an email from contact R and D directly. And if if you have a customer that's kind of pushy about this about this, then it's good to pull in the the account team or the PA. Um, to to kind of reemphasize the message that support doesn't um, support these releases. Um, the next one is developer tools and plugins. So again, it's like third party and add-ons. We don't support support developer tools or plugins. Next one is application tuning. So like if the customer is looking for a certain level of performance from an application um, and they're trying to tune it. Pivotal support is not the best um, stakeholder to, to investigate this as we don't have probably enough knowledge to, to work on these issues. It's more of a solutions architect, pivotal architect, um, account team. It may even be a professional services engagement. Um, and there's a note with this. Um, pivotal support cannot help with tuning of customers' applications or code. If you need assistance with this task, please reach out to your pivotal data engineer or pivotal architect. Uh, platform architect who can help. Um, and the last one is best practices for application or installation architecture, design and guidance. Again, um, it doesn't make any sense for people support to be engaged to create a solution for a customer or design a solution or to design what parameters are best suited for, suited for this particular design or this architecture of this product. Um, anything that is covered in the documentation we will support, but if it's not in the docu doc as documented, we don't support it. Um, and it's best to again engage the the architect, platform architect, engage the customer's account team. And the customer may have to get a professional services engagement, or may have to get a solutions architect assigned 
um, via the sales team to to get this properly set up for the customer to meet um, meet their needs. Okay, that's that's roughly it. Um, there's a lot in here. Um, these these are general guidelines, so so these guidelines could apply to most products, but there may be different features, different kind of corner cases for different products. So there are a list of specific products and scope of support docs in the bottom of this um, knowledge article. So please review them in your own time and there's other, other videos um, available to help um, discuss these at length as well. Okay, that's it. Um, thanks and have a good day.